in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Jesus, we love your name. Let's lift our hands and give him all the praise. All the praise. For the beautiful one. For the beautiful God. Hallelujah. In one minute, can you give him all the thanks for tonight? Just bless him. Bless him from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. Hold hands with someone close to you and let's just pray in the spirit for a minute or two. For he will bless us. Hold hands with someone and pray, prophesy. Pray in the spirit. I like you to pray just one prayer and say, Lord, may my unbelief not stop anything that you are able to do in my life. Lift your voice and pray. They limited God in the wilderness by saying, Can God make a way? Please make sure you are praying. Don't look around. Pray from the depth of your heart. We are believers. We are believers. We believe in your limitless anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, the hearing of faith and the working of miracles in my life, I receive that grace tonight. Can we pray? The hearing of faith that produces the working of miracles. Can you lift your voice and play? Please be serious. The hearing of faith. The hearing of faith and the working of miracles. The hearing of faith. hallelujah hallelujah god bless you just squeeze the hand of someone left and right to mean good evening and then be seated please bless you hallelujah worship team god bless you let's honor our worship team awesome people awesome people most times we honor them and then we forget when I say honor the worship team, many of us just look at the vocalist and then you leave the instrumentalist out. I think these guys are brilliant people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amazing. Beautiful ministration. Hallelujah. You're the beautiful God. The beautiful God will not create ugly lives. Are we together? Tonight, God is going to change our lives again. 
what I'm going to be teaching, I truly believe with all my heart that it will contribute in no small way to building our effectiveness in the kingdom. You know, these words come week in, week out, and um, they are tailor-made. They are first and foremost revealed by the Spirit, but also designed to build us very specifically so that we become very effective in the kingdom. I want to talk tonight along the lines of kingdom advancement. There are a few things that I think that the Lord would have us know tonight. And um, the worship team just set the pace very powerfully with that. How we love your name Jesus, you're the beautiful one We love your name sang it from my spirit it just came out like an arrow hallelujah the concept of kingdom advancement is not a new concept in this house we have um, dealt with different series at different points in time attempting to help us understand what the kingdom is all about and um, the concepts of the kingdom and how to advance the kingdom so we've we've taught several messages different dimensions different approaches but just a little refresher so that i'll connect with what i want to discuss today we have learned and for those of us who are just learning um there are two dimensions you may want to write it down again there are two dimensions to kingdom advancement every time we talk about the advancement of god's kingdom it is first and foremost important for every and any believer to be interested in this subject if you are not interested in the concept and the whole idea of kingdom advancement then it means you do not love god and you're not a contributor to the building of his kingdom kingdom advancement generally speaking refers to before i give you the dimensions um, it refers to any listen and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed to establish the lordship of christ listen please any and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed right to establish the lordship of christ first across the hearts of men or in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities any and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed like an arsenal to the end 
that the lordship of Christ be established in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities that's the definition of kingdom advancement so we say we are advancing the kingdom to the degree to which we are making use of every scriptural arsenal it must be scriptural to advance the frontiers of the kingdom by this definition it suggests that there are two dimensions to kingdom advancement number one is establishing the lordship of the Christ in the hearts of men this is very important you will want to write that the first dimension to kingdom advancement is the establishment of the lordship of Jesus Christ in the hearts of men and then the second dimension is taking the culture the principles and the ideologies of the kingdom and using them to transform society so the first dimension has to do with a spiritual reality establishing the lordship of the Christ in the hearts of men and then the second dimension has to do with communicating his ideology across every strata of human activities it's important you know this the first dimension of kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of Christ um, in the hearts of men will require what we know to be evangelism and discipleship I'm just doing a recap we have taught this the whole idea of what we know to be evangelism and discipleship they are the structures that were designed by God to bring men to bring the establishment of the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men um, there are all kinds of versions and understandings about discipleship and about evangelism and this is not in any way attempting to interpret it in the religious way that we know because for many people when we talk about evangelism or discipleship the concept has been so abused it's like an indoctrination into a denomination and their tenets that's not necessarily God's idea of discipleship evangelism and discipleship is the scriptural pathway to establishing the lordship of Christ across the hearts of men then the second dimension taking the influence of the kingdom his culture his ideology permeating society when we are able to successfully do these two things then it can be said that the kingdom of God is advancing within a territory or in a dispensation my concern this evening this night is um, the establishment of the Lordship of Christ in the hearts of men I want to just zoom it a little there and um, help us to be very effective at doing this by God's grace I think that we understand the concept of influence and how to take the the light and the power and the culture of Jesus Christ across territories we've spoken about different mountains and how that we need to establish the value system of the kingdom but I think that many people do not know how to establish the lordship of Christ across the hearts of men so I want us to look at a few things that I believe will be very very important Daniel chapter 12 please verse 3 Daniel chapter 12 verse 3 media we have a lot of scriptures today so please you'll be ready for that um, this will be more of a study tonight I just want us to pray later on but um, I really want us to have understanding I like us to read together is projected as loud as you can one to read and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament uh-huh and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars so there is such a state where a man can turn many to righteousness it says they that be wise they shall be as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many not few in God's mind he desires that every believer would participate listen in this dimension of kingdom advancement as far as the establishment of the Lordship of Christ in the hearts of men is concerned largely we have left this ministry to 
evangelists we have left this ministry to those we call the fivefold they are the only ones who make the altar calls they are the ones who print tracts they are the ones who do all of these things and then for those who even engage in what we know to be evangelical activities they largely do not do it with understanding they just do it um, in honor of a, 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 a suggestion or a program by the church or some kind of structure that makes them feel spiritual you see the thing about the kingdom is anything you are doing that is not out of understanding you will not be blessed from it understanding is very important understanding is very important when carrying out any kingdom activity is is religion you see religion is an attempt to do spiritual things in ignorance and in the strength of the flesh and all through scripture you see that people who did even nice things religiously they did not receive any reward the system of the kingdom is such that you must take out time to understand the dynamics of whatever it is you want to engage in and then on the strength of that understanding you will now get up and act acting just because others are doing it acting just because you are told to do it acting just because you want to you know ease yourself of the guilt of separation will not bring the desired results that's why we do things for a short time and we do not have the impetus to continue the drive to continue because we largely carry out activities especially in the body of christ there's too much copying many people do not sit down to find out why why this why this why do i have to pray in tongues well i just saw apostle praying in tongues and i think he's good for me that's nice but a time must come in your life where you must have a personal understanding are we together why do i have to tithe i think everybody who i know to be rich is tithing so i should just do it that's not enough conviction is very important in the kingdom you must have a a sense of personal persuasion it produces restful confidence so no matter how sacrificial the activities are your conviction sponsors the strength to go through it lots of people do not prevail over the things they want to do because we largely act without conviction we copy one another we copy men of god we copy churches and then we do not have the strength and the emotional the grace to push it to the limit and to stay there until results are produced the lord will help us tonight in jesus name I, I have been burdened, especially in recent times. Um, the Lord has been putting this burden in my heart concerning the need for the body of Christ to get back into what we have known in the body of Christ as the ministry of soul winning. Are we together? the establishment of the lordship of christ in the hearts of men you know sometimes it's like wear and tear we can fade off certain areas of concentration while pursuing others in an attempt to look for certain things we sometimes drift away from the things that represent the foundation the the pivot the epicenter of christianity and our mandate as given by god sometimes we can veer off sincerely but we veer off and then we find out that we are doing other useful kingdom things but we may miss out on that which represents the foundation of the desire of god all through scripture you see from the old testament to the new testament the lord communicating his desire to draw men who have been alienated from him are we together all through scripture he would speak sometimes through the prophets and um, liken a nation to a harlot that has left her husband you hear scriptures like draw near to me and i will draw near to you when jesus came he used different parables that suggested restoration the parable of the lost talent the parable of um the, the prodigal son you know all kinds of um um expressions to communicate the father's desire to have the heart of people that have been rebellious to his way and his counsel turn back to him 
And I think that while it is true that this is not the only part of kingdom advancement, this is a major part of kingdom advancement. In fact, sincerely speaking, listen, in order of priority, kingdom advancement should first start with establishing the lordship of Christ in the hearts of men first before the systems. So if we have industrialization, we have civilization as a, use of, as a result of the practice of the culture of the kingdom and we have people going to hell, we have people who are not serious with God, you know that that is, that is, um, that is not balanced. Is that true? God desires first and foremost more than civilization, more than prosperity, more than education, more than, you know, people who have come into the working knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. God wants the hearts of men, the hearts of men to return to him in truth and in sincerity. Altar calls in many assemblies is almost not observed again. And the average believer may be able to boast of other spiritual activities like tithing like giving you know like service in the house of god these are very important aspects of kingdom activities but many people cannot tell you that they have contributed actively to winning and establishing souls everybody say winning and establishing souls say it one more time winning and establishing souls every single one of us here if i ask you to pick up the mic and tell me your experience you will tell me of one person here and there who insisted until you came to the knowledge of christ and for those who were already born again one or two people who had to um sacrificially follow you up until you are now grounded to a, an extent in the things of God and you are helping others too. But many of us are unable to extend that spiritual benevolence to others. So we sit back enjoying everything that um, has come to us through redemption and not extending it to others. And most times we tell ourselves, I'm not a man of God. Are we together? I'm not a man of God. So during a corporate evangelism like we have it, we can walk around and talk to people. But as a personal revelation, that part of your kingdom responsibility as a believer, as you'll be learning shortly, it is a responsibility. Listen, soul winning, establishing the lordship of Christ in the hearts of men is the responsibility of every believer. It's not a suggestion to choose if you want or not. It's, it's, it's like breathing. It is part of the component of your spiritual existence. And if we are not taught and pushed into that point, then there will be no continuity. A time will come you will find a whole generation bankrupt of spiritual things. Do you know do you know this was the mistake of many of our parents? They loved God. They loved Jesus Christ. They kept the values of the kingdom. But they did not think it to be such a big deal to pay attention to transferring the lordship of Christ to the heart of the children. So you can find a man and a wife, uh, you know, his wife who loved God so much but you will be surprised maybe a pastor and his wife and then you will be very very surprised that they have never actively preached to their child do you know talking to people about spiritual things is not the same as saving them you can discuss tithing you can discuss rapture you can discuss hellfire and heaven that's not preaching so that we are around people discussing the things of God which is good and very valuable but have we paid attention as to whether this person that I'm talking about has my son, has my daughter, has my friend, has my roommate, can I truly attest to the fact that this person is saved and if yes, is this person actively being established and grounded in the things of God it's a great concern in the heart of God many of us don't care so once you have a child who is doing well in school whether or not he's a serious christian he can come to church 
Do you know many parents do not talk to their children about God? The children can learn around. But to have a day when you preach to your child and lead him to Jesus Christ, no. We leave them to other people. Are we together now? Do you know it's so embarrassing when the closest people around us have to walk with us and never get to know Jesus and then after many years someone somewhere will be the one to come and save them. How many children are taught about Jesus but never given an opportunity to declare his lordship. Look, talking about Jesus does not save men. Talking about him, talking about spiritual things, talking about rapture, talking about heaven, talking about grace, talking about whatever, it does not save men. Men must understand and receive the gospel of salvation and be given an opportunity to declare their willingness to accept his lordship. So there are so many people around the body of Christ, but they are not saved. And let me tell you what hardens them. Because they've been around the things of God so much. They know scriptures. Are we together? They can talk. They've done so many things that look spiritual. And so they convince themselves that by those activities, they are saved. They are not saved at all. Do you know, let me tell you even coming out marching out to come for altar call does not save men that's not what saves people there's nowhere in the bible that says the moment you come out in an altar call you are saved no these are just representations that have been adopted by the body of christ to help and guide people to be serious about their decision and then to have a way of getting their details and follow them up but that's not what saves people. In fact, let me surprise you. Reciting salvation prayer is not even what saves people. Because the Bible says you must believe. You can stand and you are joking. You are just talking because you have to repeat what you have been told. And not be saved. And go back and you are still hell bound and a candidate of hell. So winning. So winning is not just saving people's souls. So winning is establishing them. Let me emphasize this. When you get people saved and leave them the way they are, they will not grow. And chances are that their, their, their lives, eventually, many of them will derail and even get back to their lives. establishing the lordship of christ is more than just saying a salvation prayer so you guide someone and he says lord jesus you know i am born again and you are happy you say this guy i, I saved him he's my soul the key is establishment 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 very very important that believers not only come and bring people but see to it that they are established all through scripture we see that the lord um, has emphasized the need of people who are lost to come and to draw nigh to him so every believer is called to participate in the advancement of the kingdom but more specifically tonight in establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men there is nothing as beautiful as a life that has been changed transformed you know when when how many of you have seen someone you know was not serious with god and then all of a sudden you look at that person a few years later and find out that the person is a burning and a shining light there's nothing more beautiful than a life whose values changed a life whose ideology is changed someone can come and say i love the lord with all my heart that's how some of you were you are even surprised finding yourself in the house of god loving god so passionately and pressing into the things of god some of you know where you were who you were and all sorts of stories but by his grace look what he's turned your life into now so there is a spiritual reality that must be established in the hearts of men being born again is not just an emotional thing it must come 
with transformation it must come with transformation when men are not transformed by the power of the word then it is not the word that saved them there must be transformation so there's a lot of faulty supposed born again many believers who claim they are born again and for many years many years yes of course i know that our growth in the spirit is progressive but at a point in your life i should be able to look at you and see your values altered the same thing you used to believe before and after no change the same way you used to live no change the same convictions the same ideology believe me you are not born again are we together now yeah there should be progressive transformation as a sign that the seed of the word of God has been planted within your spirit. And if we don't pay attention to this, we will keep celebrating crowds for instance and we'll keep looking at a society that is depraved men and women who God, you see, that's why there are so many members in church but very little people that God can find space to move with why is it that we have millions of members congregations scattered around the world but god is still looking for people because there are very few people i'm telling you this who have experientially allowed the lordship of christ to be established in their hearts they are the ones who have given him space to find expression through their lives before i continue i want to ask you a very sincere question can you look at your life you who was or were and you who is now can you note a noticeable um, tangible transformation if you cannot find a transformation in ideology in beliefs in passion in priority you need to revisit what you have called being saved say amen Praise the Lord. Mm. All kinds of music before, all kinds of music after. Anyhow living before, anyhow living after. And you say it doesn't matter. No, it, it matters. You are not born again. It's as simple as that. There must be some degree of priority. The passion. Look, let me tell you something. When a woman is pregnant... Are we together when a woman is pregnant the transformation that occurs in her is mandatory and automatic mandatory and automatic except except she has not taken in if she has taken in it will begin to alter her psychologically physiologically there will be noticeable alterations that's how it must be if the seed of the word of god has been planted in you then there should be certain things your appetites your desires your values and most importantly your priority let me tell you how you know you are really saved is that your priority about god and the things of god supersedes every other thing yeah that's what our parents told us when they got born again all of a sudden there's this song that says um when all things that surrounds me become shadow in the light of you that's what happens a new life a new life and all of a sudden you look at the things that represented your aspirations and your passions and they look like shadows compared to what you have found this is how jesus teaches about salvation that someone had a field listen and then he found a treasure the parable of the treasure he found a treasure when he saw the excellency of that treasure what did he do he went and made sure that he sold everything bought that property and remained there but what we do is we take the treasure and go somewhere else that's not salvation you are not saved what i'm saying i know that is hitting a lot of us but i am telling you sincerely it is important important if you're a pastor here don't sit down and keep smiling at your congregation because they are smiling back at you make sure they are saved make sure that the people you are leading that the people you labor on day and night 
are saved. You see, that passion to see souls saved is not in many of us. So you can have a roommate, you can have a friend, you can even have your loved one and not care. There is no contribution from your part to make God a priority. Not saying anything, not doing anything. I cannot see any active effort on your part that you are making to turn their hearts to righteousness. Is God helping us tonight? It is part of our kingdom responsibility if we love God to be intentionally committed. Listen, intentionally committed, not circumstantially committed. If it just so happens that I find a soul that needs Jesus and he says, sir, I want to be born again. Then you lead him to Christ. That's not evangelism. That's not evangelism. The same way people intentionally look for jobs because you know without that job, there is no food. The same way people intentionally look for husband and wife. Someone comes and says, Jimmy, I'm, I'm trying to look for a life partner. You see how serious the person is? That's how serious you must also be with soul winning. See, this is not religion. There is a spirit, the spirit of the Christ that is at work in you will push you to do that. See, the gospel when truly received and the power therein will, you will be too grateful to keep quiet. Find out people in the Bible who receive things from Jesus. Even when Jesus said, don't tell anybody, they were too grateful to keep quiet. The madman at Gadara, the Bible says he went to the Decapolis and brought the people. Remember the, the, that woman who married um, six men? And Jesus being the seventh man in her life. The Bible says she left her. She went to fetch water. But she encountered something that was superior. She left it. When God is one of many important things in your life. There's an encounter you've not had. You hear me say this all the time. Listen, listen. The... God being a priority, non-negotiable priority, under no circumstance, regardless of what excuses you would have, should God at any point be second place in your life. That's what must happen to you first. You must experience it so that when you get someone born again, you know what the person should become like. When you get people born again and they do not yet have your passion, you know the job has not finished. You should draw them to a point where it eats them up. It's called the zeal of the Lord. Hallelujah. So you can stay 10 years. How many husbands whose wives are not saved and they don't care? How many wives whose husbands are not saved? How many children whose parents are not saved? Look at me. Over 90%, if not everyone, if not everyone, including myself, you look at your immediate family or your extended family, you will find people who you know are on their way to hell. It's a highway to hell. Are we together now? Yeah. I know that you hear people say this emotionally, just preaching evangelism. But I want to tell you something. I don't mean to scare you. But I want to seriously tell you, there is a real place called hell. There is a real place today like this called hell. Are we together? The Bible says, and books were opened. Listen to me. Books were opened. And another book was opened, which was the book of life. Hear what the Bible says whosoever's name was not found written thereof the bible did say he was advised to wait somewhere he was cast into the lake of fire that was burning with brimstone and sulfur that's what the bible says the bible says it is appointed unto man to die once listen carefully it says afterwards the judgment it didn't say after that a celebration after it is appointed unto man you see, in my little life and the privilege that ministry has afforded me, please listen carefully. I have had the opportunity to be at several funerals. 
I've had the opportunity to watch the bodies of people I knew were once alive, now dead. At that point, brothers and sisters, please look at me. Whether you have a PhD, listen, please. Whether you had a first class, are we together? No matter what it is that you have had that you call your accomplishment in life, I don't care what you have done. I don't care where you have gone to. At in five minutes, not breathing, it becomes useless. Has it occurred to you? I can be standing here looking nice with my kaftan and no breath and I'm gone. This body lies lifeless. You will wake it. You will pray on it. You will prophesy on it. You will pour oil on it. The body lies down lifeless what does that tell you it tells you we have to focus on the things that are eternal listen 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 seeing then that the relevance of the things we chase and pursue are only relevant for as long as this body is alive so if I give somebody school fees that's good he's going to school if you say you want to marry and i give you five hundred thousand to help you and marry you will like me you'll be very happy but the moment your body this body you are seeing can no longer host your spirit everything becomes useless jesus gave us a parable that is so touching about a man um lazarus and the rich man do you still study your Bible? Or the job took it away? Hmm. There was a man who the Bible says was very wealthy. And there was another man who was Lazarus. I'm not talking of poverty and prosperity. I'm talking of two people. Are we together now? The Bible tells us that the eternal destiny of that man was nothing like his life on earth brothers and sisters this is what the bible says if our hope is only in this life only in this life we are of all men most miserable have you seen them slaughter a chicken you've seen chicken one minute it has life trying to escape and you are very messless over it you put it down and in a few minutes the life is gone just like a vapor and that thing is lying down there and when you hold it two hours later you are about to eat it you look at this this was once alive now it's in your hands and you are about to eat it the same way like that chicken listen nobody may eat you but i guarantee you a time will come listen please very importantly a time will come where this mortal body will either be laid to rest or will be translated to another body it really doesn't matter which one comes as far as the glory that is coming is concerned because it makes no difference but one thing i can tell you is this there is nobody nobody who is not born again who has received the son who will make heaven one two there is nobody who has not received who, who has rejected christ that will spend eternity with him because it's not about heaven we are still coming back to the earth but the question is so that where i am there you may be only true believers shall be right our uncles are not true believers listen our aunties are not true believers we watch them we know they are not born again our colleagues are not true believers but we do not care we do not know that it is a responsibility do you know the last time I checked, which was many years ago, statistically, eight people die per second. How many people? From when Koinonia started till now, calculate. If we are still working by that, eight people. And part of all those people who died, some were tongue-talking Christians, some were pastors, some were prophets. Are we together now? They've all died. No matter what you think about them, see this life is brief I, i'm waking us up 
to focus on the things that represent priorities for the kingdom god has priorities and we must we must train ourselves to adjust in the midst of all of the blessings i'm still going to talk about a few more things but i have to press this as a foundation so winning is not a suggestion so winning kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men it's not a suggestion it's not for pastors it's not for those who are free and don't have a job yet no take it down mike i want to sing a song don't mind song when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did i do my best to live for truth did i live my life for you when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in my clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life every other thing in life only becomes meaningful when your eternal destiny is secured did you hear what i said every other thing in life hear me please every other thing in life i don't care what it is is only relevant when you can guarantee that your soul is saved and then you must extend that passion to as many people as the grace of God upon your life can make happen. Every time there is a bereavement, they send me text messages. And I get a text message. Oh, apostle, so, so, so has died. And you know, the first thing that comes to my heart, most times, over 90% of the people send me a text and say, apostle, I know if you speak a word, he will come back to life. Frankly speaking, I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I've seen great miracles in my life and in this ministry but my concern listen my concern is not so much about bringing the person back to life listen as it is knowing that this person died in Christ you can die in money where are you going mention it you can die in education where are you going to you can die in politics. Where are you going to? Die in an aircraft. The only ones that are wise are those who live in Christ and if need be, die in Christ. It's not that you die in what? You can die in worry. It's still hell. You can die in stress. It's still hell please hear what i am saying you see people dying all the time and we keep watching them there are people today every time you think of you know right now based on the bible except if there are other mysteries we do not yet currently know i believe that there are many supernatural things that we cannot all explain but as far as the revelation of the bible and our understanding of it now has afforded us we know that those who did not die in christ are lost and gone they left their houses behind listen to me they left their certificates behind 
I'm not saying those things are not important, but they are only important. Listen, they are only important when the major things are in place. Is your father born again? If you hear right now, look at me, listen, wherever your father is. If you hear right now that he drops dead, will you rejoice? Will you cry in joy? Or will you cry in grief? If you hear that your mother has gone to be with the Lord, will you rejoice? Will you cry in joy or cry in grief? What of your roommate? What of you? Because there are people who will never take this thing seriously. You will always come for koinonia. You will always go to churches and do a lot of things. But are you saved? It's a very serious question. That you are working for God does not mean you are saved. That you have a Christian name, Joshua, Jesus our salvation. No, 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 no. As we worship you, let all the world come and see how the mercy we receive from you can set men free. That's very important. They need to come. We need to participate in getting. This is not adding members to a church. Listen, listen. Now, this is where I have a problem. Come. When, when we go for evangelism, for most people, sadly speaking, we are just shopping for larger congregations. Now, of course, it should culminate into church growth. But the foundation, listen, is to grant that this person has an opportunity to be turned to righteousness. Do you know I can get this brother saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, loving the Lord, and as I've gotten him saved, I've gotten 200 other people saved in him. Are we together? Because this person now will take those values. Look how some of you, a few of you that have really participated in soul winning. Look what has happened through your life to others. I'll never forget one of our ladies years ago. She might be streaming following right now. And um, her entire family, they were not born again. None of them was saved. Then she got born again. And God granted her grace. I think her younger brother also got born again. And then eventually, you know, she kept pressing passionately and intentionally. The mom now got born again. It was left the father alone. That man refused and said, no way, he will not get born again. I know if you ask her what she wanted God to do in her family, it's not to build a house. It's not to go and build a house in the village and prove a point. She just wanted everyone to be saved. I remember very clearly, like yesterday, the day her dad was saved. When her father was saved, she called me crying. We met around then in the campus chapel. And she said, look, her whole family had been saved. Do you know, when he was saved, his family members had to drive to his place. And they say, which worry made you to give up what you were practicing and give your life to Jesus? If his finances, we can sort it out. And the man got saved under living faith. So that, 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 that fire has come to stay. The joy of salvation. When we give testimonies and we say, praise the Lord. I built a house. Somebody just built a house and he dashed me. We stand up, we roll on the ground. But when we say, praise the Lord. Someone God saved. We just clap and hey, please go and sit down. Because of our priority. Our priority. I've seen a few people that have trusted God to be saved. Get saved. And I've been surprised at the joy. The joy that filled my heart. Who in your life needs to be saved through you? Not needs to be saved. Who in your life needs to be saved through you? There are people who the prophetic mandate is on you to bring their salvation. And you're not doing anything about it. I challenge every mother here and every father here after this meeting. Go and sit down with your children if you can especially some of the little ones don't allow this our little the moment they have gotten to an age of discretion 
if they can steal if they can fight they can be saved talk to them are we together now you don't allow children just leave them around a child who insult you visitors are talking is answering back that means he understands jesus you can call him and preach intelligently and let that child say when a child has not gotten to the age of discretion the salvation of the parents cover the child but the moment he gets to the age of discretion from that's why there are no children in hell because the salvation of their parents will cover them god bless you we have a threefold participation let's rush quickly threefold participation there are only three ways we can partner with God in soul winning and the establishment of the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men only three ways and I want to teach you now please pay attention because it has nothing to do with whether you are a pastor listen I think I should press this in this is not the work of pastors this is not the work of apostles and prophets and missionaries and mission agencies this is not the work of men and women of God this is a responsibility that is saddled on every believer it's just that we are not taught that when you are saved we teach people about their rights in Christ but we never teach people about their responsibility in Christ the only reason you have rights is for responsibilities you cannot be taught about your right in Christ the inheritance that you have gotten and not be taught what your kingdom responsibility is with every privilege comes responsibility every privilege there's no privilege that does not come with responsibility if I buy you a car then you start maintaining it you come to me to maintain the car I return it back because it means you are not qualified it's a privilege but I, I, I give you that on the strength of an understanding that you can maintain it is that true when God gives you an anointing he expects you to press to gain the character dimension to sustain it that's the responsibility that comes with that privilege if you love privileges without responsibility then you are an irresponsible person so we have a threefold participation the first dimension or the first participation the first way any one of us can participate actively in establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men number one is the ministry of warfare and intercession write it down the first participation that everyone and no one has an excuse because you don't pay for prayer there's no you, it's not something you go and wait for an atm no the grace is there once you are alive and you are in christ the ministry of what warfare and intercession why do we have to pray so that the hearts of men will be open to receive the gospel we are going to look at a number of scriptures second corinthians 4 please verse 3 to 4 second corinthians 4 verse 3 to 4 and then you give us first corinthians chapter 6 chapter 16 verse 9 the ministry of warfare and intercession look up please we are going to read a lot of scriptures we have to be very fast but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are what so as obvious as these truths are when somebody is not in Christ it's not as easy as you think it is there is there are lots of things you can believe now because the spirit of God is in you to help you believe how you know it was the spirit of God is because you criticize this before you criticize praying in tongues you criticize a lot of things but now you have embraced it it's by the spirit it's not just by growth and maturity physically speaking if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost aha uh -huh, next verse verse 4 please in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not are you seeing why they believe not because although they are looking at you their minds their spirits are blinded 
lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them so you can see that man the moment you leave koinonia he looks at you and says now what, what, what kind of thing are you put doing you sing for over over 30 minutes are you the only one I mean, can't you just sing praise and worship for 10 minutes and hurry up and go don't just insult them there is something that is making that happen when they say shout jesus or do this and you are doing and somebody's watching and say, ah, how can responsible people behave like this there is a spirit that makes spiritual things of non-effect to people who are not in christ that's what necessitates the ministry of intercession if your wife or your husband is obviously not open to the things of god don't hate them don't fight there is a spirit listen there are spirits that stand to make sure that people do not return to god in truth so you can see someone who is a smoker you will sit down and talk to him while you are talking to him the guy will say kai this will be the last cigarette and you are watching him you are even encouraged then you rub his back and say you are a good boy two weeks later you check his pocket and it's not just one you will see a packet because there is a spirit listen counseling never saves people you don't counsel people into salvation that encounter with the seed of the word of god that breaks everything because it's not physical like falling under the anointing we have little respect for it if someone falls under the anointing it has a physical manifestation and so we say wow great power was on him but when someone gets born again most times we trivialize it because we think it is not supernatural enough the ministry of warfare and intercession have you noticed for those of you who live with so many people who are not born again is when you pray and return from spiritual things that there are hostilities have you noticed that the moment you finish praying that's the day you will fight with your father or your mother it's not normal there are spirits they respond just like daniel finished praying and the spirits began to move certain people in babylon to come and put a decree so you finish praying you just rounded up three days fasting as you are rounding it up there is war all of a sudden your food becomes salty madam you're in trouble no there is a spirit look men are slaves to the spirits that control or influence them this body is a is a dumb terminal this body is only an executor of whatever spirit controls or influences it you have to know this about people so that you can learn to love people this is one of the understandings that sponsors loving people it's difficult to love people based on the way they behave you have to look beyond that you have to access an information that is more than that so if your younger brother tries to fight you and beat you and you look at him and say i will kill you you are fighting in the flesh there is a spirit no sane person will do that when a woman carries bottle and breaks the head of her husband in response to no money or anger do you think that i know she thought she was just angry look at jesus and peter get deep behind me satan ah -ah. peter looks at jesus and says me he says look peter i know you don't know but i am seen in the realm of the spirit satan came and perched at your soul and took advantage of your voice to advise me not to go to the cross and he saw it he said satan desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not he said and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren because he will come and do the same to them demons speak to men they don't have to be under the influence of or, 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 under under the anointing there are many people saying nonsense you know it's a spirit that is speaking there's a way you see men talk you know that's not them an interchange between them and another spirit the same way you hear a man speak and you know this is not an ordinary man speaking it is got to be a divine spirit speaking through him so you have to pray when you religiously stand up to go and win souls like that you can return with casualties you must pray challenge those spirits that's what we do in koinonia before every service the prayer department is praying I am praying we, we clear the atmosphere so when we come 
we have already sent an incense of prayer and once we begin to speak the word of god penetrates the hearts of people like he's doing yours now and when you make the altar call you see people coming and you are even surprised seeing those who are coming because prayer and intercession listen when the spirits that influence men and blind their minds leave you will be surprised to see how innocent and fragile those people are are we together i once ministered to a gentleman somewhere and uh, while they they used to do counseling at my place and this guy entered and he just entered and sat down and came in with the mother and the mother said this this boy I, i'm tired of him he's a terrible person he's this and that and while i was looking at him the lord opened my eyes and i'm telling you there was a spirit comfortably comfortably when i say comfortable you know that this spirit is not under pressure whatsoever and i saw that this is what makes this boy behave this way they said when this boy is angry through god is my witness even five people will not be able to hold him is that a normal human being hmm. the ministry of prayer listen before you do anything pray pray i think this is worth talking about i'm not necessarily teaching on prayer tonight but learn to pray let prayer precede your action don't sit down and assume you know what to do pray 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 before taking decisions pray before taking actions there are spirits that are antichrist everywhere the antichrist is not just a person the antichrist is a spirit that is at work now opposing the purposes of god in the lives of men pray you are going for a job interview you just say i got first class you are not praying you want to go and save someone you are not praying the moment you are going the spirit is waiting there as you are entering he will tell you see i tried calling you yesterday you didn't pick you think i'm your mate say sorry i came to talk to you about this get out of here and then when you leave the spirit leaves and the person is back you see people acting you know it's not them they may never admit it but brothers and sisters there is a spiritual realm everybody say there is a spiritual realm that controls the happenings of everything here listen it is the day you want to come for koinonia that the person who is supposed to give you money will vow and say i will never give you money again why it was not about that it's because you are going somewhere and you will hear something that will change you you've got to pray people who do not pray become victims i know we live in a time where people say it's not all about prayer <laughs> it's about it oh it's about it in this wicked world that we live in you have to pray keep the forces of darkness where they belong keep the forces of darkness where they belong you must pray you must pray he spake a parable to the end that men ought always not often to pray so you pray shakata bakata lord i'm coming for koinonia i know that there are people coming with burdens and there are wicked spirits that will try to cause trouble for them on the way so that they will not get to cgc there are all kinds of things like their phone missing like their wallet missing so that they will stay arguing on it and not arrive there and hear the word that will change them so we pray we silence those spirits And while you are, you just plan that I'm not coming for Koinonia today. Say why? Say I don't have transport. Someone else wants to come to Koinonia. In answer to that prayer, the Holy Ghost will lead the friend to come and say, let's go. Say I'm not ready. Say I'll pay for you. You see, that's an answer. It, it looked like action in the earth, but prayer programmed it. Prayer programmed it. How many believers live their lives carelessly and we are victims the purposes of god is not advanced because many do not pray when was the last time you took a prayer request and knelt down in your prayer altar woke up in the night to pray just for intercession father increase more souls salvation don't say me i'm the shy type can't you pray men ought always to pray and not to fail. let me tell you listen there are many of our loved ones i guarantee you 
from now to December, if you will pray for them, you will be surprised what will happen. They may not listen to you, but one day God will take them to one meeting where one man of God is. And before you know it, the power of God will carry them in that meeting. The next thing you just hear, they will tell you, I've been filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm two weeks old. Praying in tongues. Prayer. Everybody say, I will pray. Say, I will intercede. Warfare prayers. Warfare prayers are not discussions. Listen, warfare prayers are not prayers of petition. Right? We have a teaching like that hopefully next year on prayer a series on prayer there is a difference between supplication there's a difference between petition warfare prayer is you taking advantage of all the tools that has been given to you in redemption the name of jesus the blood of jesus the word of god these are tools that are given to engage the forces of darkness and establish the victory that has been wrought in christ over people over territories when we talk of warfare and intercession that's not the, that's one of the reasons listen listen hold on that's one of the reasons why god gave us the prayer language of tongues it's not just for you to feel anointed it's a mechanism to help you engage in intense warfare intense warfare do you know let me just digress a bit and speak to someone here you are where you are now because you have not caused the gates of hell to give way we don't we don't it's not by physical strength this victory is wrought in the secret place one hour two hours you listen listen let me teach you how to pray you see you don't pray come david Dam. you don't pray blindly you use your mind like a like a picture to zoom the thing that you are trusting God for and you direct your prayer there. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible, I will show you where this is. The Bible says you can do above the things that we ask or your imagination must play a role in prayer. The tongues is directing it, but your mind is like you keep a picture. So I'm praying for my family. That's what is on my mind. As I'm praying in tongues, I know that these tongues is not for edification of my spirit. These tongues is for warfare to that end. Yeah, that's how to pray. That's how to pray fire that produces results. You lock yourself off your phone. That's not the time to be pinging and praying. You are not serious. You pray with your heart see let me tell you i believe in corporate prayer but i believe in personal prayer there are certain dimensions you will only hit when you are alone hmm. there is a way you can be praying with somebody at a point the person will be tired and he will make you feel stupid you too you will feel guilty and say oh yeah let's round up father we give you all the glory has god finished with you listen when you are praying the holy spirit is not there as a tenant is the direction of both the duration and the strategy of the prayer you don't choose how long you just want to pray you stay there till you command victory i tell you if you if that is established in the realm of the spirit you can walk out and laugh and watch all the physical nonsense and jargons that happen because they have been settled in the realm of the spirit many people do not settle things in the realm of the spirit that's why whatever comes to you physically destroys you unfortunately it's unbelievers that know how to engage this the moment you speak to somebody and say see um, you are not going to get promoted then he looks at you and says all right manager I've had you the next thing the guy said can I take one week uh, break I just want to go and say hello to my family and the person rushes immediately in the night while you are snoring your way the person is there and all his anger is in the realm of the spirit he's with the herbalist there he's baffing he's drinking he's saying whatever things doing all kinds of things then they carry your picture and do all sorts of things and the herbalist will say he's done and then all of a sudden the manager is sleeping in the night and sees a stranger walk up in his dream and say if you don't promote this guy the guy will get up in the morning and call the board meeting and say look a few developments have been happening strangely in this company and we are promoting somebody listen you who is the christian you are there angry and saying but i'm qualified and the guy is saying congratulations sir. ah you are now a great man and then 
he takes the title of whatever to the shrine and that's how they move forward there are people who literally live with charms as in they live with it they, it's a daily bread, it's their version of prayer they know they must be in constant touch that's why you talk to them, they say be careful though. you are talking to me, you will die like a chicken and you too die, you don't and you, and die like, and you find out that your leg is already swelling before evening you don't confront darkness carelessly until you have stamina in the spirit. All this bragging we do in the body of Christ will land us in trouble. Will land us in big trouble. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Meaning there are some people that are not known. Can I say I must be known? Somebody say it. Can you pray in the spirit just in one minute? Sound an alarm to the gates of darkness. Shakata balataka. Rakata preskadia. No, the fight is not physical. The fight is not physical. The fight cannot be physical. It's in the realm of the spirit. Victories are established in the realm of the spirit. The physical realm is only a, a realm where people act. They act what has been finished. Stop confronting realities from the physical realm. The job issue is spiritual. The salvation issue is spiritual. The stubbornness of your loved ones are spiritual. Stop wasting your time. Stop blaming people. It's from the realm of the spirit. That's how you command victory. The ministry does not just grow by publicity, it's in the realm of the spirit. Pray, pray. Skapata kata li katosh. Enkre to kata la bakata. Seke teke 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 te. Reko to koto bakata la bawa. Bata pras katai. Oh yes, I am victorious. Te poto shola ba 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 ba. Every unsaved person will tear down those walls. We command the forces that stop them from hearing the gospel. Every spirit that stops them from going to the house of the Lord, we command it. Hallelujah. Please sit down. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. Thank you, David. Quickly. 1 mm. Corinthians 16 verse 9. Look up, please. Write these scriptures. I will just talk on them quickly and then we'll move to the next one. For a great door and effectual is open up to me. What is the limitation? There are what? The person wants to come. You say he stays close to Koinonia here. His house is just close by. It looks short in the physical, but in the spirit, the distance is far. It would take prayer to shorten it. Clear those forces off. Hmm. See, let me tell you. There is a way the devil can know you. Your voice. The same way you say hello and you know somebody's voice. Yeah, you can be known. Because you are, you are a frequent uh, in, in, in network. There are those, there, there are frequent programs. Those, those you, you step into a package for those who are always calling. Many of us only call when there's trouble. It must become a habit. You must pray. You are lying down and you just roll. Just for waking up for that one minute, the devil hears it. She kata kata maya. And then you sleep again. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Let me tell you, when, when you are like that, you will be surprised what will happen to you. You will get up and just in a few minutes, you are just sitting down and the moment the thought of someone comes, he's not saved. That's not the time to say, oh, I think I'm missing him. No, Rika Tokaba. What is happening to him now? We secure him. Marakoto Sobada. And then you wake up with any dream that does not look like it. Oh, come on. See, I'm teaching you what I do. If I'm not doing it, you will know. You wake up with a dream that doesn't make sense. As you are waking up, eh? before you, as you are waking up, 
the spirit that was sent on that errand will know that one who has understanding is there I know it looks like I'm sounding silly but this is how victories are commanded so you look at men in the physical and you cannot see what they are doing physically so you will be angry because you expect them to, to labor physically but the labor is in the spirit hmm. any church listen there are three departments now every department is important especially in koinonia but hear me i'm speaking to pastors there are three departments in any church and any ministry if the devil wants to destroy that ministry there are three departments number one the ministerial team strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter one the first place of attack of darkness is the shepherd the man of god or the ministerial team number two the worship team listen carefully they are vested with the responsibility of creating the atmosphere for the presence of god to find expression and the devil will do anything within his power to water down the efficacy of the presence of god number three the prayer department by the time the prayer and and for the prayer department it doesn't he there, there are very little things that kill prayer people big things don't destroy prayer people little things little things i like this lady why do you like her too and your entire robust prayer life comes under fire ah pride little things are you getting blessed any man of god who has spiritual sense will guard these ministries in his church or his ministry personally do you know let me tell you let me teach you one secret on how by the grace of god i administrate over here and I. it's like there's something god has done to my spirit it's like a rope god connected my spirit to every department all the departments in this ministry is like a rope huh the same way there is i mean it literally there is a level of course they rise and fall they move up and down but there is a level that no department must go under the moment they go under i pick it in the spirit immediately i know something is wrong either i must come and find out what is wrong or i must pray or whatever it is if the problem is from me you know for sure a retreat quick the, 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 every other thing is cancelled that's how you sustain fire you must be sensitive and discerning and prayer does that second corinthians chapter 5 second corinthians 1 verse 5 to 11 long reading quickly let me just take our time and let's read quickly we have a number of scriptures and i want us to read them 1 verse 5 okay it says for as the sufferings of christ abound in us so our consolation also abounded we are reading down quickly please down to 11 it says and whether we be afflicted it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer this and that and that now listen it says hold on it says which we also suffer or whether it be comforted it is for your what and next verse and our hope of you is steadfast knowing that as ye are partakers of the suffering so shall ye also of the consolation we're reading to 11 hurry up please for we would not brethren have you ignorant of our trouble listen which came to us in asia that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raised the dead. Look at what they went through. Verse 10. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will deliver us. Last verse 11. Ye also helping together. How? That's why we were victorious. Ye also, while we were going through those things in the mission field, when they were about to kill us, this is how you help. Ye also helping together 
by prayer for us. So it was not just that we were mighty men of God. There were times we were about facing death. But he also helped us by prayer. Next scripture. Very powerful scriptures. That's why I'm reading them. Philippians chapter 1, 14 to 19. Please let's hurry up. Oh, just give us verse 19 really. Our time is gone. But you can write this. Philippians 1, 14 to 19. Scriptures that talk about the role of warfare and intercession. Verse 19. It says, for I know. I wish we could read from 14. It says, for I know that this shall turn to my what? How? Through your I know that the things that are happening around my life will eventually translate to salvation for me and that will happen through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ next scripture Isaiah 62 verse 6 to 7 the ministry of prayer the ministry of intercession and warfare cannot be overemphasized Let's read it. Two verses. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, it says, keep not silence. Next verse. And give him no rest until what happens? Until he establish, until he makes Jerusalem a place in the earth. There are men who prayed Jesus to come. Anna the prophetess. There are people who pray the purposes of God to find expression. Hmm. Let me give you two more scriptures. Romans chapter 10 verse 1. And then we look at 1 Timothy 2 verse 1 to 5. Quickly please. Romans chapter 10 verse 1. And then 1 Timothy 2 verse 1 to 5. I'm giving you all these scriptures because I, I expect that you go back and sit down and thoroughly look at them. It says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be. What was the content of my prayer? They might be my heart desire for my family members and my prayer to God for them is that they might be last scripture is the grand scripture first Timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 very powerful scriptures first Timothy 2 1 to 5 I exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercession and giving of thanks be made for how many people for all men right for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty three reading down to five for this is good and acceptable in the sight of our savior who will have how many who will have so why do we intercede it is in god's desire that we not only pray for our churches but we pray for territories because his desire is that all men be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth last verse for there is one god there is one mediator between god and men the man christ jesus he desires that that man christ jesus be revealed and that will happen when prayer supplication giving of thanks be made for all men that God will save them. The second way you participate in establishing the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men, the second way is through the ministry of direct soul winning. Through the ministry of direct soul winning. Matthew 9 37 to 38. Let's have the following scriptures Matthew 9 37 to 38. Then we'll look at 2 Timothy 4, verse 5. Thank you, Jesus. God is helping us. Matthew chapter 9 37 to 38. Listen, then said he to his disciples, The harvest is truly what? 
plenteous, but the laborers are few. Next verse. It says, pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers. That's the second dimension. To be the laborer yourself, the goers, the ones who will make sure that they are participating actively, talking to people. If it means creating a blog, if it means taking advantage of the social media, if it means connecting people to the resources and the ministries and the platforms that will get them saved, you are the goers. Second Timothy 4 5. Second Timothy 4 5. It says, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, and do the work of an evangelist you are not an evangelist but do the work of an evangelist fulfill your calling do the work of an evangelist don't say i'm not an evangelist i'm not called into the fivefold ministry no it says do the work of an evangelist john chapter 3 verse 7 very instructive verse jesus himself speaking i like you to read it it's projected one to read marvel not that i said unto you aha uh -huh, ye must be born again i make it mandatory for your eternal salvation and so there must be goers forceful Write these other scriptures down. We'll project only one more, but I want you to write this. Colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. The verses of emphasis is verse 5 to 8. Colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. Then give us Romans chapter 10, please. Verse 8 to 14. Romans 10, 8 to 14. Quickly, please. Romans 10, 8 to 14. Thank you. But what saith it? Look up, please. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Nine, we're reading down. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Read on. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it talks about salvation. Read what it says. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed 12 for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him so he's talking about calling upon him now then he says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be now this is the problem 14 how then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed the people is not like they are rebellious but no one has told them no one has given them an opportunity it says how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard then he says how shall they hear without a preacher there's got to be somebody who will take up that laborious responsibility to take the gospel to them very quickly the third key so that we will pray the third way you participate in establishing the lordship of god's kingdom in the hearts of men is to become a kingdom financier write it down so number one we see the ministry of warfare and intercession number two you are the goer number three a kingdom financier who is that they are the men and women who supply financial resources for soul winning financial resources for the gospel anyone who loves god and is interested in participating in building his kingdom 
and advancing the frontiers of his kingdom in the hearts of men God is giving you what to do there are so many people who are so idle in the body of Christ and they say I have not discovered my purpose there is a mandate that is upon all of us an intercessor a goer you are a laborer and then a kingdom financier let's look at a few scriptures Luke chapter 5 please Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 9 I found this scripture a few years ago and it blessed me I want you to pay attention pay close attention I want to share a few things that will really really bless you Luke chapter 5 is a long reading just follow me and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of the Lord he stood by the lake of Gennesaret too and he saw two sheep standing by the lake take note but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets no miracle no salvation next verse and he entered into one of the ships which was simon's and prayed him that he would trust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship yes please now when he had left speaking he said unto simon that's the reward he gets now for donating his boat launch out into the deep listen please and let down your nets for a drought this is talking about fish but we are relating this to souls now okay verse 6 okay verse 5 and simon answering listen he said master we have toiled all night and have taken nothing nevertheless at your word i will let down the net we are reading down to 11 and when they had this done they enclosed a what a great multitude of fish they were now winning souls and the ministry was expanding beyond their capacity now souls were coming but they needed a lot of help next verse and they beckon on their and they beckon on their they would have lost those souls because now there were more souls coming and they were holding more programs and the current financial level of the ministry could not take it and instead of losing the souls they called on certain people and he says which were in the other ship they called on to them come and help us so that we do not lose the souls and he says that they should come and help them and they came and filled both ships so that they even began to sink they called on their partners their net was about to break it would have been a wasted effort because now they do not have venue for prayer those who were born again did not have a venue for prayer so they called on rema chapel come to us as partners and give us a venue so that we can pray less those that are saved be lost listen there are men and women and everybody in my opinion in my opinion should participate in supplying financial resources for soul winning for God's end time agenda you know this this thing about finances every time it is said most people and, and of course I know that there are people who have um, done a lot of different kinds of things but the truth remains and hear me please that one of the responsibility I said responsibility you don't have to say we are raising offering please Pastor Alpha come and give 10,000 Pastor Femi come and give 5,000 no it should be part the same way you tithe there should be a portion of your income that is designed to support the advancement of God's kingdom that is very very practice in Islam right in fact it's part of the tenants they do it very very well that whenever you are rich you know it's been it's been a teaching that they grew up with that part of that resource should be committed in the building of you know um, 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 all of the, the structures that they raise and all of that when you read Acts chapter 4 don't turn there just write it down Acts chapter 4 32 to 37 the Bible says how that the early church they had a culture the Bible says there were people who sold their lands 
there are people who sold certain things and brought the resources he said none lacked among them there was such flow of supplies there was such flow of benevolence because many of them knew that part of their responsibilities were to supply financial resources Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a I'm giving you a few scriptures Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a it says cry yet saying thus saith the Lord of hosts my cities how shall they be spread abroad through prosperity shall they be spread abroad and I will yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem there is a place of financial supplies hear me please for the advancement of the kingdom and this is not a favor you know hold on please the way many believers the way many believers address this thing when they have a seed maybe to sow to a man of God or to a church the, the way they drag themselves and carry it and make it as if they are doing a favor do you know God is my witness I, I stand before the God of heaven and I lie not if you look at my financial statement God is my witness and I say this before the God of heaven whom I serve in the spirit more than 70% of my financial resources at this current level is distributed spread to the body of Christ for the advancement of the kingdom believe me I stand before God in heaven how much money can you use for yourself how much clothes can you buy this is not something that i started doing now it's been there when your heart is committed towards god because where your heart is there your treasure will be also committed for kingdom advancement there are many programs i don't uh, they are not directly my business the moment i hear about it i see what i can do to support it I'll never forget early this year there was a pastor very great man of God you know nice pastor somewhere and certain things happened and they were about to jam him and the people out of the venue and God was helping them I know this is a man that loves God and fears God and he called me he said man of God we're about to get embarrassed on Sunday there is no place of worship I said over my dead body not when I'm alive at least it's within my power how much is needed for this please send me your account details let me see what I can do and that man called me and was crying together with his wife they were both crying and said the Lord will bless you see kingdom investment is one of the greatest ways to be a businessman kingdom investment believe me when I tell you when done with a pure heart and done sincerely and out of love is a jackpot in the realm of wealth forget that the result may not look like it's coming immediately my goodness you will receive answers to prayers you did not pray kingdom investment as a lifestyle not something you do when some money just comes how can i have money that someone blesses me and the kingdom never participates in it no way and it's not because of koinonia no so you don't think it's just a bias just because i'm leading a ministry not at all i consider myself to be a proper kingdom financier there are many men of god who don't give they don't even sow to the work they are doing they don't they demand for money from anybody but they never give are we together how can I sit down? I'm staying in a house of 20 million and they need a carpet of 1 million in the house of God. No way. No way. No way. No way. No way. See, I'm showing you things that you do for the sake of the kingdom that will move the heart of God to vow certain vows. I learned this, I learned this attitude from David Biome is a man who truly truly is a is a principality 
territorial principality when it comes to wealth and finances his pastors are the, about the highest paid they are more paid than bankers they live in an estate this is a church but it came through giving there are many of you let me talk to you I want, I'm, I'm not saying this I want to help you there are many of you when the offering basket is passing it's truly I say this not don't think I'm trying to manipulate you I fear God but let me tell you something I'll tell you why many of us never strike a chord and get the attention of God through our giving immediately after the grace you are going to eat buns outside of almost 500 naira and there are people you take 50 naira look at it squeeze it back take 20 naira oh it's the new one you squeeze it back you take out the old one and then you just say usher please come back and then you just drop it and do you know the painful part some of us are working class and you have not changed there are some amounts I cannot give God it's not pride it's the truth I will be wicked how much do I spend on eating please talk to me how much do I spend on eating if I'm wearing a watch of 10 naira and I'm giving God offering of, of 20 kobo am I stupid won't I sell the watch or carry it and drop it in an offering basket there are things you do that moves the heart of God make it a culture that kingdom investment is part of my life whether or not there is a giving program find a need create an opportunity and solve it and watch the God of heaven arise for you the third way we participate there's a man Dr. Paul Enenche gave the story one time I think he asked God to grant him grace he wanted to set up he owned different businesses but he wanted to set up one business specifically for the funding of the gospel and God answered his prayers and he set up the business in, in hundreds of millions do you know 100 percentage me 100 percent of the profit 100 goes to the mission field that's an unkillable man I show you a man that no charm no charm can touch let me show you a scripture now we are going to pray very interesting scripture very very interesting scripture Matthew 27 please Matthew 27 from verse 62 we are reading down to chapter 28 verse 15 take notes please 27 verse 62 let me show you how Satan wages war against the finances of believers because he understands the role of finances in advancing the kingdom. Ready? This is the resurrection of Jesus. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate. This is Jesus being buried now. And the chief priests and all the people who made sure he died. Next verse. Saying, sir, we remember that the deceiver you see the spirit of the antichrist because who is the deceiver in scripture satan now he's using a man to call jesus a name that only satan should be called the deceiver while he was yet alive said after three days i will rise again next verse command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure till the third day lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people he is risen from the dead so that the last error shall be worse than the first next verse Pilate said unto them ye have a watch go your way and make it as sure as you can right so they went and made the sepulchre sure sealing the stone and setting a watch next chapter in the end of the sabbath as it began to down you know the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and so on and so forth next verse please and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled the stone next verse we're reading down please hurry up next verse verse 4 for fear of him the keepers did shake those who were guarding the tomb I'm going somewhere just follow me and they became as dead verse 5 and the angel answered and said to the woman fear ye not for i know that you seek jesus which was crucified he is not here for he is 
reason now listen the whole fight is because of this remember they went to um, Pilate and said we do not want this statement he is risen so go and seal the place are we together now for he said come see the place where the Lord lay seven and go quickly go quickly evangelize quickly are we together go and take this good news and tell people what has happened for he is risen from the dead and behold he goeth before you in Galilee there shall ye see him lo I have told you verse 8 now listen and they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did wrong to bring his disciples word 9 listen as they went to tell his disciples please follow me behold Jesus met them saying all hail and they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him 10 then said Jesus unto them be not afraid go and tell my brethren that go to Galilee and you know they should go there and they shall see me next verse please now listen when they were going behold some of the watch those who were guarding they came into the city and showed the chief priests all the things that were done they went and said ah what you are trying to avoid has happened Jesus has risen next verse and when they were assembled with the elders what happened and taken counsel they gave please read it they gave they took finances and gave people to say Jesus did not resurrect next verse and saying his disciples came by night and stole him away they gave them money and said go and preach that should be the message it's true we know he has resurrected but we use money to silence the gospel and if this come to the governor's ears we will persuade him and we will secure you you will lose your job just make sure you that anything you must do Jesus is not alive we have given you the money and so they took the money and did as they were taught now listen to the, the, the dangerous statement that follows and because of the power of that money and their loyalty to it and this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until today that's the role money played there are Jews today that are doubting because somebody collected money. How much more that you release your money and say, let them hear. Oh, they need a translator. No problem. We can pay for it. There must be a translator who will speak in Hausa and we will pay for it. Satan paid men to say Jesus is not alive. He's paying Nollywood. He's paying Hollywood. He's paying the Illuminati. He's paying musicians. Satan is still paying men. To say Jesus is not alive. But there is a generation of kingdom financiers who know the purpose of wealth. It's not just for buying cars and bragging and proving to people in the village. They are men and women. Look, let me tell you. They will supply financial resources beyond imagination. Do you know? When I see great ministries that I know are serving the Lord in truth. Begging for money. Begging on TV. If you can help us. If you don't help us, we will shut out. Do you know how bad I feel? You've heard me say it again. There are television stations, brothers and sisters, that need only a million dollars and it will write off their budget for an annum. Somebody this night is about to sleep with a billionaire. By 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, whether it's Saturday or whenever, they are crediting one million dollars to her account. She's going to enjoy it for saying Jesus did not resurrect. That is the prayer point of a whole ministry as anointed as they are do you know part of my goal in life is to be extremely wealthy extremely wealthy and the reason is this i already have a catalog of ministries catalog catalog of ministries per month the same way you receive salary oh this is going to destiny makers international this is going to rema this is going to this this is going to capro this is going to this this is going to this ministry and you feel the joy and the excitement and you tell the devil i am paying to make sure your head is being stamped ah listen and then satan wants to kill you 
the anointing on your the recipient of your money will wake him in the night he will pray his heart out for you to remain do you know let me tell you sincerely i'm a very busy person but i found out subconsciously that there are people that when they call me i pick i'm serious it's not like i'm a biased person i just found out that it seemed like i placed a lot of priority and i had to trace and i found out that they were either people who were dangerous givers to my life or the house of god whether i knew them or not it's a principle it's a principle finance god's business and watch him defend you god will stand and defend you see let me tell you anytime things are not going well in your life carry a seed and run to a house the house of god or a man of god and just go and drop it there i'm giving you a big secret you have silent i don't care what the challenge is it has died these are mysteries in the kingdom those who know how to trade the secrets of the kingdom stand through life you look let me tell you pastor you can stand you are quarter to die is all that is nonsense there are mysteries you engage in i show you one of the mysteries the house of god the house of god your money is about to finish take some of it and run to the house of god drop it there you are you are it's a covenant you are connecting the supply with the house of god I, this is what i do Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 oh. victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. The greatest attack you will ever get in your life will be in your finances. Make a vow to advance the kingdom and see all hell break loose. Satan will prefer a church where the healing anointing is flowing than where finances is flowing because every other thing you have you cannot share is yours your salvation yours the only thing you can share is your resources let me tell you i've shared the vision here but let me say it again one time very clear vision i don't know how many years maybe two three years ago i was praying seriously praying in the spirit and all of a sudden my eyes were open and my ceiling just disappeared there's a big tree just in front of my place and when I looked at it it was no longer a tree I saw a big the only way I can you know a spirit that the Bible calls Leviathan right that looks like a sea creature like um like a dinosaur these kinds of creatures now I saw it like that it was a huge the eyes one of the eyes alone was like the size of my head two red eyes angry the tail was and not it was like a snake connected to it the tail was another creature and had its own life by itself and the creature was looking at me i was looking at it it was looking at me and this is what he told me he says so you think you can release financial blessings for god's people something like that and that was it i know these spirits they know me i've seen them that's why he will not give you the job because god already knows that you have vowed that 20% of your salary will go for the kingdom and the devil will fight to make sure you don't get the job and you say what is it about my job it's not about the job it's about the agenda that the job will support yeah that's why satan frustrates people that's why you enter that exam hall and then he tries to get you blank it's not about the exam does satan need your script no He's trying to frustrate you because he sees the destiny and sees what will be advanced there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. You make up your mind that you are going to start giving. All of a sudden, you see the devil want to come up with all kinds of schemes. Listen, I preached last week's message as a word of hope for you. 
because there is there is a rising church i guarantee you brothers and sisters not everybody is greedy again there are men who have vowed some of you here i know as you are looking at me you can give your last pin for the kingdom i know and such kinds of people there is going to be a transfer of wealth in 2007 i woke up under a very strong visionary encounter and i had four words audibly audibly massive kingdom wealth transfer the holy ghost spoke to me that there is coming a wealth transfer not just because preachers are saying it it's an agenda where he will make one person like a nation where people will build businesses and the profit is not for them they don't need the money it's just for the kingdom it's just for the kingdom you come and see somebody building a church and you say why are they stopping you come and look at cgc and say look look how much does it take you hear that they are they are putting a there was a time benny Hinn was looking for over i think he spends about a million dollars per week that's his budget a million dollars about 450 million naira of nigerian currency on crusades and souls are you stupid to spend that much money just on souls no it's worth it brothers and sisters it's worth it it's worth it for as long as i live my money will preach it's not only my mouth my body will preach my mouth will preach my finances will preach and i i don't know how many of you want to join me but i'm on a project to stamp the gate of poverty territorially territorially i say it in the open and i say it in the public it will bring a lot of criticism a lot of things will happen but it is for his glory and for his kingdom when people are organizing programs and they sit down budgeting how much one million uh, how much do you have i have 10 naira how much do you have i have 250 thousand and everybody starts coercing one another big men in many churches have become the holy spirit because they are the only ones who dictate how many pastors have to depend on people the welfare of so many pastors is so terrible look at their wives that's why many of you don't want to marry men of god when a man of god comes here, i love the anointing but i, I don't love the state the, the persona is very discouraging that is changing say it's changing yeah. in the name of jesus it is changing i have seen books that should be written i have seen books that should go to territories do you know there are places in nigeria that they've not had the gospel i'm not talking of america in nigeria imagine if your finances was part i saw a picture i think on, on on the internet that touched me a little boy was on a scale almost dying uh, i think some of the in the, the the idp camps there and the child was dying they were barely feeding him with whatever I, do. I don't know what that was dying how much is it how much is it david was a man who loved god he sat down one day and said how can i be in a palace and there is no house for god he said lord i know that you inhabit the heavens you don't need a physical building however i cannot as a king sit down and there is no house for you i will arise and build a house for you god said you have shed too much blood i won't allow you he said no problem i'm still not offended i will gather the money let my son build it there are men and women who will do that there are men and women who will stand up and override budgets some of you god will empower you by january you come and say how much is the budget for bus transport from january till december just this is it just take it see creed nothing kills greed like giving in the house of god the cure for greed is not counseling the cure for greed is not saving the cure for greed is not doing business the cure for greed is doggedly pouring your resources if you perish you perish I cannot tell you how many times in my life the Lord has instructed me to empty my account. Empty, zero, zero, zero. I don't mean zero, 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 home and abroad. No. What use is the money if his kingdom will not be advanced? When you see God blessing certain people, find out what they are doing. No, don't just say God is blessing them. Let me tell you, one day I was reading scripture and a revelation came. When I read the scripture, I found out that the last treasurer Jesus had was not very faithful. And I said, Lord, I suppose that there should be vacancy of treasurer. Make me one. Make me your treasurer. 
you know who a treasurer is the money is not your own but you pass it around there will always be a portion for you but you pass it around a distribution channel may God make someone hear that your current love for money will never give you finances many people think the secret to kingdom prosperity is business investment all of this there is a place for that but let me tell you all those things are rubbish when your heart is not you must have a deal with god it's a covenant let me show you a scripture psalm 122 we're rounding up psalm 122 verse 9 give us an niv please psalm 122 verse 9 oh, 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 oh. Oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Psalm 122, verse 9. Are you stuck, maybe? Yeah. Okay, please just turn it so that we'll hurry up. It says, For the sake of thy house, let me just quote it. I desire thy prosperity. For the sake of thy house. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Give us an NIV. Do you have NIV? If you don't, that's all right. NIV says, I will seek your prosperity. So, Lord, I'm looking for this money not just for a name for myself. No. Brothers and sisters, how many houses can you live in? How many cars can you drive? No matter how greedy you are, this is all the stomach you have. Hmm. but the kingdom but souls if you like buy any kind of designers it's finite it's finite do you know what made the rich man a fool his wealth did not flow his wealth stayed keeping money and sitting on it is absolute foolishness it's a sign of fear and foolishness there is he that scattereth and yet increase it there is he that withholden more than his meat and tends to poverty because of the house of the lord our god i will seek your prosperity seek your good romans chapter 10 i'm rounding up now verse 14 and 15 the scripture we read earlier on Romans chapter 10. How then, I'm rounding up now, shall they call upon him whom they have not believed? So you have to pray that the forces that have blind their minds to believe be warded off. And how shall they believe of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So you need a goer. But the last dimension, 15. How shall they preach except they be sponsored? How shall they go except someone sends them? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. And bring glad tidings of good things. How shall the ministry be built except they be sent? The gospel is free, but the means to take it to the lost is very expensive. Brothers and sisters, if I give you the running budget of Koinonia per week, many of you will be very surprised. All of the things that happen per week alone, you will not imagine. But thank God for the means and the capacity. Please, just imagine for one minute that as we are standing right now, there are people outside to pay. And we are stranded. Do you know what will happen to me? As anointed as I've preached, as much as you have been blessed, because of the financial pressure on me, I will be forced to do something else. After preaching such a powerful message on souls, I will now say, Sam, please come out. Pastor Alpha, come out. And now try to twist your hand because I have a budget to meet. There are many men of God we call money mongers. They are not money mongers. The pressure of finances or ministry can make you sick. 
so when you are blessed you are here seated there's light the sound system is working well everything after service you are going there's security standing everything is paid for you know the devil designed this system such that there's no free thing everything is paid for believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god sister believe in the lord your god my brother believe in the lord your god concerning your admission believe in the lord your god concerning the baby i know it's five years but believe in the lord your god believe concerning god turning your life around you need more than a job you need breakthrough you need favor if you get a job of fifty thousand, you are still backward because you should have been working for the past 10 years so now the issue is not just a job of 50 or 100 thousand that god can you shift my what would have been the backlog of the past shift my 10 years to enter my september and wait for me there that i can enter september and I, it will look as if september is 10 years put together one of the greatest ways breakthrough comes is the manipulation of time read your bible and see what god did with time when it was time to visit people he made the sun to stand still he made the sun to go backward are we together he did something to time when you lose time you have lost everything believe in the lord your god number two Please, let's go back to um, Second Chronicles. He said, believe in his prophets. Listen carefully. His prophets here doesn't just mean someone that prophesies. His prophets here doesn't even mean someone who is not fake. That means someone who is real. That's not what he's talking about. He said, believe his prophets. So shall ye prosper. To prosper means to do well. He says, believe his prophets. His prophets are not just people who prophesy. His prophets are not just real men of God. <clears throat> Listen carefully. This is where we miss it. You must learn this. His prophets here are not just men who are doing the biddings of God. It has nothing to do with maybe someone being real. His prophets here means the person sent to you listen listen the bible um come sam come darling look at this i'm elijah and i'm going to the house of a widow of zarephath are we together don't you think on my way going i'm going to meet other people who have problems so i meet a gentleman who has a problem and i just greet him how are you where is the house of the widow of zarephath he's shaking me but doesn't receive anything because i'm not sent to him i'm a prophet i probably met other widows elijah probably met other widows lamenting and he said oh dear you mean it you mean this how your life is sorry eh and he kept going the same way jesus saw 10 lepers the same way jesus would see people and touch one and stand up and go there is a man sent to you there is an anointing sent to you listen i know that many people will not like me for what i'm telling you not every anointing can bless you generally speaking by opening your heart i mean at the anointing a portion to change your destiny it's true hear what i'm telling you and then god will bless you There is an anointing, a portion. There is a grace designated. Let me tell you, happy are you the day you come into the environment where the anointing that was sent for you. Do you know, let me tell you this, and I tell you this honestly, my heart is passionate when it has to do with blessing people. But I have met people in my life that I just prayed for them just for praying sake. But I knew in my spirit, I wasn't sent to them. Of course, you wouldn't tell them so they don't feel bad. But you know. 
but i've seen others i couldn't even wait for them to share their challenges because i know i know the anointing sent to you so believe his prophets are we together there were many widows in zarephath elijah was looking for just one haba prophet what of other women <clears throat> i love them i can pray i can intercede may god bless you do a b and c but i'm looking for a woman of zarephath where is she finally you find her and his clash is not even ready for you she's doing something else the prophet would have been angry to say i spent time to come here you don't even know what you are missing i'm on my way going but because he was sent he had to stay his assignment was to change her life when you find the anointing and the prophet that god has sent over your life and your situation let me tell you you will watch that anointing rubbish your situation in the as if satan does not exist it's, it's not just this is where we have a little challenge with many believers who just say the most important thing is God yes you are right but you are wrong the most anointing is anointing what is there what is so special about this man of God this is what I'm teaching you now people are sent to people even the word of God is sent he sent his word like a messenger meaning until that word is sent you can stay there but when the word comes like a messenger angel Gabriel left other believers around earth and was directed to one person Daniel all that fight for 21 days in the heavenlies he would have been angry to say I'm going to someone else mm -mm. he said Daniel I am come to give you understanding are you the only one I am come to give you understanding Jesus is appearing by the road Saul is on his way to Damascus brothers and sisters the Bible says there were other people with Saul God would have been fair enough to at least give them something and then he isolates one person and discusses with the person the rest just fall down and don't even know what threw them down they just got up to clean themselves and say Kai now wow, what is all this one now whereas one person has that encounter sent 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 the word that changes my life sent i have had encounters with sent words and sent prophets and my god did my life change tonight let me tell you if you can believe this he said believe his prophets i know you are a businessman i know you are educated I know you are smart but there are many equations in this life that cannot be solved with pen and paper they are solved from the realm of the spirit it's only the result you receive here are we together now believe in his prophets so shall you prosper write this down please his prophet here is the vessel sent from him to you you must first acknowledge that this vessel is sent from God to you. And one of the ways that you can help yourself to believe the prophet God has sent to you is investigate the dealings of God with that man. Don't just believe for nothing. You have a right to investigate the dealings of God with that man. What is so special about this man? Why should I believe him? Why should I take the word that he's bringing seriously? Every true prophet of God has a track record of his dealings with God. Investigate the dealings of God. Study the track records of his results. I think it's unfair if you just yoke people to believe you just like that. No. Give them room to study the track records of your result and find out whether the results are worth your believing. How do you believe his prophets? Open up your spirit to receive both his grace and his instructions. Don't just receive the grace alone. 
instructions many times believers miss it because we miss instructions very subtle instructions sometimes very ego stinging instructions like you were seated here now and then i just said everybody shout jesus you know i don't mean to embarrass your intelligence you don't sit on a seat and shout jesus you've been singing a song before you came here you there was jesus more than 10 times in that song you kept shouting jesus jesus lover of my soul and nothing happened and here you are sitting and a man is saying just shout jesus once if you don't have this revelation you can sit down and say please what is we are not children here what is all this nonsense he told naaman go to jordan wash seven times naaman said me jordan there are clean rivers somewhere and a small girl said you are the one in trouble if you don't go and wash you can go back with your leprosy two scriptures and then we'll pray exodus chapter 14 and verse 31 and israel saw the great work which the lord did upon the egyptians it says and the people feared the lord and believed the lord and also what his servant moses god performs mighty things and creates that track record not just so that he alone will be believed god also wants the vessel he's using to be believed the bible says they feared the lord they believed the lord and they believed his servant they believed the lord and they believed his servant you believe the lord you don't believe his servant you may not get any miracle exodus chapter 19 and verse 9 exodus chapter 19 and verse 9 and the lord said unto moses look up please lo i come unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when i speak with thee and believe thee forever that means i can talk to you without the cloud but i keep that cloud as that evidence so that the people can trust that it is me you are talking to i'm i'm going that far because i don't just want the people to believe me alone i want them to believe you too because their receiving is dependent on their both they are believing me god and they are believing you his servant he says and the lord said i come in a thick so sometimes when God does some of these signs and wonders, it's, it's not really just for him alone. When God does some of these things, oh, there's a lady here and someone is shouting. Another, you know what God is doing? He's using those things. It's, it's a similitude of the cloud to help you see. You can call somebody and say, who is grace or who is um, victory? And you can say, this is just guessing. I'm sure it's just guessing. But how do you guess that someone in this direction do you guess that one god does some of these things sometimes purposely to just address the the leftover of unbelief because you see some of us are coming from different christian experiences some of us have been our minds have been messed up by all kinds of theology all kinds of philosophies some of us have had bad experiences with all kinds of men of god prophets and whatever and chances are that when you come like this usually you will just add the man of god to the list of all the people and hope that he's just a better version of them and god says not so and he uses these signs to speak to you that you are in mount zion are we together it's amazing how a little miracle can just readjust your unbelief immediately readjust your unbelief while the devil is trying to lie to you can your life be changed all of a sudden the the power will touch the person near you this somebody you shook hands with turn to your neighbor and say this and that so you know that the person uh, the person can be acting It's a very difficult thing for believers to believe God but I think it's even harder to believe a man of God 
And people have all kinds of justifications as to why they shouldn't believe men of God. But regardless of what your justifications are, if you believe God and don't believe the vessel, you will be established but you will not prosper. Are we together? Your prosperity is what gives evidence to your establishment. You must believe. One word from God can turn your life around. One prophetic word can turn your life around. All these strange spirits that oppress people, they don't just go because they are told to go. No. It takes the anointing. I was talking with one of the protocol uh, people when we were coming down here and I told him, I was shaking my head and then I was talking to him and I said, I am amazed driving down to come for the miracle service now. I said, I am amazed at how people in Africa and Nigeria trivialize success. I am shocked at how people um, believe that success is about luck. It's amazing how people can see a huge sacrifice and trivialize it and just make it look like, I think these people are just fortunate. Is that true? I, I, these were my contemplations while I was coming. Listen, there's no result that happens in this kingdom by mistake. Now, including the testimony you are about to have. That gentleman from Ghana, he did not just press this thing and found my name. No, 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 no. The anointing that is sent with that word works day or night. Are we together now? There are many testimonies just like his, that gentleman. You see that now? Someone will tell you I was sitting and I had a dream. How about those who buy new phones, brand new phones, brand new phones, and then they open it and see koinonia messages inside? How do you explain that? A new phone, not new, uh, what they call that thing, not new memory card. I'm not talking about new memory card. A new phone that you bought it, tear rubber, you are the one who opened it. Then the first thing you see inside is a message that answers your question. Who, who now, who, how do you explain that? Listen, listen. We live in a world that is not natural. It only manifests the spiritual naturally. The, 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 the earlier you got this, the better. My brothers and my sisters, hear me. All that you see in this world is only a reflection. Say reflection. The real control room in this our world is the realm of the spirit. Whoever can ascend this three-dimensional realm has the advantage of victory. Nothing happens that is physical. Are we together? One of the reasons why many of us are seated here tonight, among the many miracles we desire is finance. Oh, Nigerians, finance. You want to talk a good news to any honest Nigerian right now? In this day and age, as we transit into the ember month, no matter speak about their spiritual life yes speak about their love for god passion new depths but please don't ignore that other one just even if it's in passing just say something about it finance many people want to see financial breakthrough many people are working and they're trusting god for breakthrough and remember the strange thing about finance do you know why listen i'm not talking about money we're going to pray shortly do you know why many believers are poor because in the kingdom finance is warfare money is not just an instrument to live well it's a weapon see listen oh dear what's it ecclesiastes 7 let me just talk a little you was uh i, I, I didn't plan to say this but ecclesiastes 7 verse 12 let me show you something May God give somebody deliverance right now. Read it, read it. One to read. For wisdom is a defense. Uh-huh. And money is a defense. Just stop there. So we know from the word that both wisdom and money is a defense. Now look up. When the Bible says you have a weapon, what is a weapon? Something you use to both defend yourself and you can use also for attack. Is that true? If you give me a weapon like a shield, 
I use it for defense. And the Bible says, one of the many weapons, money is one of them. And the Bible says, those weapons are not carnal. The word not carnal means they are not man-made. But my brother, my sister, this thing is man-made. It was made by CBN. That means this is not what God is talking about. Because this is man-made. But the Bible says this weapon that he calls money is not carnal. He said it is mighty through God. That means there is a spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means this thing is only the body. The same way a human being is called currency. Anything that moves is a living thing. And that means there is a spirit inside the body to move it. You are only seeing the body. Where is the spirit that moves it? That's why it can enter a house. You didn't ask it to go and it will go out by itself. It can enter your account and still go out. Because it's warfare. The Bible says, believe is prophet. There is something they can do that can do something to the many things, including this. This is what we chase all around because we think this is paper. No, this is not, this is paper, yes, but there is a spirit behind it. And this thing respects that spirit. This is what you need to understand. So the spirit can instruct it to leave you. And it can leave. No matter how hard working you are. You can receive salary. And all you have is part of this left. And it can be instructed to leave you. It will, you know it's going. It's going out of your life. It just touches your hand and disappears. Because the weapons. Prosperity is warfare. It's not just about money to buy car and houses. Money is a defense. It can defend the gospel. It can defend a man. And the Bible says all those weapons, they are not carnal. So if you ever see this looking for anybody, Naira does not look for men. Something makes it come. I, please are you getting what i'm saying if you can understand this alone at least even if you don't know how it comes you already know that it doesn't come by itself these are the mysteries that surround our kingdom you ever see anybody prosperous in the kingdom my brothers and my sisters listen to me this is a spiritual realm you don't have to be a christian to believe it you just have to be alive this is a spiritual realm animals know it plants know it's a spiritual realm that's why you throw a seed in the ground and you cover it you don't leave it open you cover it because what happens there is none of your business now you just cover it and watch it happen and it grows to become a tree that you cannot push down a little seed when you planted it it had no roots the bible says just like you do not know the way of the wind nor how a woman how a child is formed in the womb of her that is with child you know and all of that so also you don't know the way of god the lord brought you here tonight because there are spiritual possibilities listen that are beyond the realm of the eyes are we together most times we believe only what we can see and understand and explain unfortunately in this kingdom there are things that you may not be able to explain when people come here to testify you see me sit quietly and i watch and many times i'm in shock as i watch the immutability of god's power in the lives of people the same way you are going to come up here to testify yes it's true what suddenly happens to you and then you have someone just call you and say we're sending you to us to get a job Hapa, my brothers and my sisters i've told you again and again that everybody who helps you has relatives too who i need 
whatever makes you to leave them and come to you is not normal that you are sitting and someone says i'm thinking of you who do you think you are no i want to help you i want to bless you you step into prepared blessings blessings that you are as sure he said master we have toiled all night and jesus looked at them you know how to fish by waiting in the night and allowing the fish to come and rest on your net then you quickly pull it in the morning that's how you were trained but let me show you another technology cast your net to the right side master but we only have left and right <clears throat> this one is not brain work now this one is not one plus one i told you one plus one plus god is equal to whatever he says the answer should be one plus one is two but one plus one plus god is not equal to two it's not even equal to ten thousand is equal to any answer that god puts there so one plus one can be equal infinity god said so are we together now i'm saying this to build your faith tonight so that you will believe that god is able to do anything at all when you look at the way you got to hear about this ministry and the various ways the holy spirit worked with you till you came today you should know already that there is a god in heaven are we together now brothers and sisters i present to you this same god who can change your life who will change your life i'm saying this so that you don't just sit down and be clapping for others wow this is how god has changed this lady's life wow we are soon going to pray you must have a desperation and say lord i didn't come tonight to clap for anybody i left my journey wherever lord i know that you will visit me and i hold on to the horns of the altar while you are sitting the devil is telling you remember tomorrow by 12 your rent or embarrassment say satan go away and before the presence of god tomorrow is too far god can how many minutes does it take to do a transfer i believe him yes i do i believe him i believe him i believe him i believe he can change my life in one minute i want you to just mention everything you are trusting god to do tonight go ahead lord i believe you for this i believe you for that those outside whether you are standing by the wall whether you are standing in any of the overflows and those following online release your faith don't be distracted any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil it's a luciferian spirit let your spirit and let your attention be open yes lord i believe you mention it don't say it's too big that's the devil too big compared to what pray believers lord i know you are able you are able to take away this reproach from this family talk to jesus even if you find yourself crying just continue to speak lord you are able change this situation turn my academics around lord turn my finances around lord i'm in a situation right now where only you the god of heaven can arise turn my ministry around lord i'm confused i don't even know where to go right now I don't know whether to go to the left or to the right, but I receive grace. Pray. Are you praying? Kill on belief as you are praying. Don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time. God of heaven. Keep 
praise. It says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving. It says, Make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, I'm here tonight because I want you to turn the situation of my family around. Lord, there is a death sentence over my family and you have to arise for me tonight. Lord, there is a death sentence over my life. Lord, I've been delayed 10 years of my life. I am backward 10 years. There has to be a way you restore me, oh God. Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here, seven children lost, including twins. Lord, I'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life. Something has happened to the anointing upon my life. Something has happened to the glory upon my destiny. I'm here tonight, oh God, turn my life around. Turn my life around. Something has happened. The signs and wonders are no more like before. The revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before. I'm here for a turnaround, oh God. My prayer life has died. I'm here for a reawakening. I no longer fast. I no longer pray. I don't know what has happened to me. I cry for help. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. Lord, I believe you and I believe your servant. I believe that anointing and I believe in its ability to turn my life around. Walk on any unbelief in my heart, oh God, and take it out tonight. Go ahead and pray. Every spirit of doubt, every spirit of fear, Isaiah 61 please participate in everything we are doing it's going to be a very fast one but let your spirit be open the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord the same Lord that you are instructed to believe hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted now listen this is why he anointed me. Because there is an agenda. But that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart. It takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart. To proclaim liberty. Now I like this one. To proclaim. To declare that the time has come for you to walk free. It says, and the opening of prison. My brothers and my sisters, there can be men physically walking, but they are in prison. Next verse. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. It takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men. It takes the anointing. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion 
Now this is the part I like. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Hallelujah. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. So the end of it is for God to be glorified. But not in the current state. No. So anything in your family. Make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service. Don't just stand alone to receive. I've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed, you are not free. You are not free at all. If you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken, you are still not free. Are we together now? Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let me give us one last prayer point. Father, every desire I brought here tonight, I'm not walking back with it. Lift your voice and pray. Every. Let your faith rise as you pray. Shalakata barakatosh. Talato shabrahasikete malakata. Shakatakata barakata barakata barakosh. Every desire. Visit me, O oh God, completely. The God who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too. The God who touches my body can touch my womb too. Lord, I insist. I insist for completeness. comes upon your life right now then the Lord okay I want to pray a prayer now please be your brother's keeper whether you are inside or outside is because of what will happen when I pray the anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically that's why I'm saying you should you should just hold them are we together now the Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen, speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying, hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands inside, outside, online, and I declare, Spirit of the living God, there are men and women here who have been delayed, and speed must come upon them. Right now, I declare at the count of three, one, two, three, receive that grace. I command speed, speed right now, speed, let the hand of God come upon you. The Bible says the hand of the Lord 
was upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I command speed, receive it. It's coming on you now. Some of you is coming on you for the sake of your family. It's not just you alone. It's coming on you for the sake of your family. Let the chains be broken. I release speed. Speed. In one month. In one month. I'm prophesying that in one month, what has not been done in five years, in one month, receive that grace. I energize your spirit, man. Speed. When speed comes upon a family, you will see it in the result. When speed comes upon your spiritual life, when speed comes upon your academics, I'm praying again. The angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed. I release that grace. Let that anointing come upon you. Speed, speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Speed. Shalakato sadakata. Sheketo kata shalakato ziata. Now listen, fire in the spirit has many significance. Fire, this fire is a mystery. It was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here. Fire does not run away from any element. Fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit. Whether you put metal, the metal will be hot. Wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now he said he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire when the holy spirit listen is moving to break chains he moves as fire do you know why because fire destroys every other thing Yet it is not destroyed. It is not solid. It is not liquid. Are we together? It looks like gas, but it's there. You are seeing it. You can't hold it. You can't cage fire. You can't lock it up. It's not restrained by anything. The Holy Ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire. Listen. This fire, I want you to bring those people out. This fire you see, will bring an end now believe me when i tell you this will bring an end to many captivities many captivities at the count of three i just want you to shout with me that word fire that word fire and many of you will be surprised in the name of jesus where sam there's a song in my spirit when we sing that song what's the name of that song blow 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 like a mighty wind am i correct so you know what i'm talking about so you sing that song by the time we pray in the name of Jesus I'm stretching my hands right now Spirit of the Lord you seek to reveal yourself as fire that consuming fire no power and no spirit even spirits can be burnt by fire in the name of Jesus I declare that any operation that is not of God at the count of three by the mystery of the Holy Ghost as fire let there be deliverance let there be refining let there be the breaking of chains are you ready now one two three bring them out fire the mystery of fire Shabakatalakatos, 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 Shabakatalakatos,
katana. I declare any chain if there is anyone under the sound of my voice and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three may that fire locate chains in this place now one two three chains be broken chains be broken Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Sing below, Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Hallelujah. Madam, please clear the way for me. This woman, tap this woman for me. One, two, and the other person, three. Please come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week and you too. Um, is, this the, is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but when you are here, we'll honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around to surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ, where is that man that came from my Duguri? The one who came to give you a testimony. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over. Look, I'm seeing fire. It's leaving my hands and it's coming upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, where is that man? We have to hurry up. There's, there's a lot to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I decree and declare over your life. That fire. The Lord, it looks like you are an elderly woman, but the Lord is going to use you mightily. What you are receiving now is not just a miracle yet. You are receiving an impartation. You will begin to know the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. Hold my hand. Spirit of the living God, you seek to use this dear mother. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will know the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways. His fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way. In the name of Jesus, come. You are the man that came from Eduguri. What is this? My CV. Your CV. You are trusting God for a job.
And who is this? Hold it. Do you believe that if I pray for you, you are returning with a job? You believe that? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing upon you and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray right now, but let me just... Um, the Lord is showing me, okay, sometimes this time, time, time just affects you. But I'm praying right now and I'm seeing letters and I'm seeing on the letter, congratulations, listen. And I'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough. Listen, let me tell you, except God is not God, if this anointing that I'm seeing touches you, then you and your family must stand here and testify. I'm stretching my hands right now. Lord, you are showing me this. In the name of Jesus, this is a symbol of breakthrough. I stretch my hands. Every family and every person that must receive of this grace, I'm stretching my hands now. You must testify. I release upon you that grace you must testify I declare whatever it will translate to whether a job whether increase whether promotion I command it I declare it I decree it. in the name of Jesus I command it I decree it I declare it right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hold the hands of this lady this one hold the hands of this lady in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands right now and I declare it's time for your family to rise I'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy and I decree and declare every embargo that holds on to that family I command that is gone now in the name of Jesus it is gone I curse the power of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards me. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. And there are many of you, there is no grace on the works of your hands. I look and in the spirit, I don't see the blessing of the Lord working. That's what is responsible for hardship. It's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this, but in the name of Jesus, I stand representing the Spirit of God and I stretch my hands back to you. I'm declaring still that ministry of fire. Many of you will be surprised. Whatever it is you are involved in, God is about to bring grace upon it. I stretch my hands right now at the count of three. May the fire of God come through your hands into your life. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus whatever has not been working in your life I force it to work right now receive that anointing I force it to work now inside outside I force it to work now those following online I pray and I speak whatever it is that you are doing I declare the blessing I activate the blessing upon the work of your hand I take away hardship from your life in the name of Jesus Christ I take away hardship from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is opening the 
lives of people into where your blessing is i'm seeing fire still this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically you will feel fire burning and ideas the lord is birthing things is is a birthing in the spirit i release that grace right now in the name of jesus lord all those who must see show them oh god where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life i decree and declare receive that grace the grace of an open eye the grace of an open vision may the lord show you where the resources of your destiny is may the lord show you where your helpers are in the name of jesus christ hallelujah this the prayer is for everybody eh? but this particular prayer now is for ladies the Lord is showing me destinies that must be changed outwardly you are beautiful you are good looking you are virtuous you are wonderful but in the realm of the spirit is not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in this in the realm of the spirit a man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called beautiful the gate was beautiful but the man's life was nonsense there are many people you can stand i'm, I'm saying everybody but this is ex specifically for our sisters and it's not just the issue of marriage i'm not talking about marriage alone that there is a fragrance a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life but many of you physically they look at you and you look like you are beautiful you are this you are that but in the realm of the spirit there are powers sitting on people's destiny in the name of jesus lift your hands i want to pray for you that that force that fail must be torn in the name of jesus Ah, I'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people especially our sisters I declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost Sisters, may that anointing come upon you now. May that grace come upon you now. I declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is. I change it now in the name of Jesus. I change it now in the name of Jesus. Listen, a man's destiny can be exchanged. It's true. Have you not read in the Bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives? A man's destiny can be a shadow of something else. You know you are alive, but this is not your life. You know that you are living another person's script. I'm saying it again. In the name that is above all names. Sir, come. I don't know you, but I want to pray for you, sir. God is going to turn your life around. And you see this prayer that I'm saying generally, this prayer, sir, is for you. You are a shadow of your life, of your, is your dad? Where did he come from? From high there. From high there. From high there. Daddy, I'm going to pray for you. This is not just about your leg. Huh? This is about your destiny. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, Shalos kapra hasegete barandos kapriashata. 
in the name of Jesus, anyone who has exchanged your destiny, sir, I decree and declare restoration now. You are the daughter, hold my hands, I pray for you. Look at me. You are a wonderful lady, huh? But bad things continue to happen in your life. Huh? You are a nice lady. Are you married? I'm married well with that one. Don't worry. I know why I'm saying. You get what I'm saying now? Yes, sir. Because what I'm seeing, this is a spirit. You are a nice lady, but people continue to misunderstand you. Yes, sir. Yes, Good sir. things and people look at you. In the eye of many people now, you are, you are a devil. You are a terrible lady, yes, but it's sir. not true. Yes. You have a very beautiful heart. This is what happens when... Do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people. A ministry can be under this captivity. No matter, the Bible said, don't let your good be evil spoken of. You can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you and people end up fighting you. You bought something for them and they end up, you are saying, what is this? I pray for you and the person says, so you are trying to say I'm the one who is not spiritual. It's a spirit. My dear, I want to pray for you. Eh? This thing is not just about your marriage that is, you know, things have gone wrong. You are a wonderful lady. Eh? Favor will come close to you, but then never enter your life. Yes, sir. What yes, do you sir. do? I'm working in a security. You are a security? Yes, sir. Did you go to school? Yes, sir. I'm running my master's. You are running your master's? Yes, sir. My dear, do you believe God can change your life yes, now? Yes, sir. I believe, sir. Hold my hands. To appoint unto them. You see that? To appoint. This one is a prophet's reward. It's not just that God is saying, do this. There is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward. The possibilities that accompany an office, I declare in the name of the God of heaven whom I represent, may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you. Listen, I lift you from this security work you are doing and I put you in a position that befits your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, Daddy sir, I'm praying for your daughter in your presence. This lady will come here and give a testimony that even you as a father will say this one is the Lord's doing. Are we together now? I declare it, I decree it done right now. Hear me? I don't care whether you are working or not. If you are not in the rightful place as ordained by God, I want to pray a very serious prayer because there are people, the work you are doing is a nonsense work. That work is, it has robbed your spiritual life. It has destroyed your relationships. Because of that work, no man can see you to marry you. Demonic work that closes you everywhere. I decree and declare, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. If you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny, I take you out of that place and I shift you to the place of destiny. I shift I shift you in the spirit. I shift you by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, if the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her, that's how her miracle would have gone. It matters that you are in the right place at the time God sends your miracle. Some of these things in the name of employment, they are traps of the devil. I'm not saying it's not good to work, don't get me wrong. But many of them are traps from the peace of hell. There are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth. Simply in the name of job. Are we together? Nonsense job. That on Sunday you're on your way going to church, your boss calls you and says you must come and resume. What shall it profit a man? If you gain the... What is it? Is that the whole world? How much is the salary? Lose your soul for peanuts. I declare again, in the name of Jesus, may my God relocate someone here by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
may my god relocate a destiny relocate a family if you are not in your assigned place i shift you tonight in the name of jesus christ Do you know, listen, we are going to pray for the sick shortly. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, he will make sure they get visa. Ah, Pastor Jay, it's good to see you. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, they will get visa to UK. They think it's breakthrough, but they have gone away from their place of destiny. God spoke to Jonah, go to Nineveh. Jonah entered a boat on his way to Tarsus. And because of that wrong journey, people lost their properties. People lost. He entered a boat and made people to start destroying their lives. They were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons. Let me tell you this. It matters that God meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you. The devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life. There are many Nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by God to be in this country. You see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad. And there are others whose destinies are abroad and the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere. And Isaac sowed in that land. It's not just that he sowed. The place he sowed matters. Isaac sowed in that land. Abraham, take down thy son and go. Go to a location. That's where I will meet with you. God is everywhere. But destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the Spirit. There are some of you, it's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians, you go to embassies and see Nigerians, they want to go abroad by fire, by force. Ask them why. They will say greener pastures. I've told you, greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth. Greener pastures is in the world. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Not when you went. Jesus instructed them and said, do not go. Go only to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that camp. Because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a root shock. Direction. Direction. Please, in one minute before we pray for the sick, lift your voice and say, Lord, direct me. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Direct me. There is a way that seemed right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a family. Direction. Your blessing is not just generically in US or UK. There are people suffering in every nation. It takes the leadership of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, two things we are going to do very quickly. And I know you have been doing this, but please, I want to plead with you to do it with understanding. Most times we do things in this kingdom without understanding. That's why we are not blessed. Are we together? We are going to pray for the sick now. Don't walk out here if you expect to walk back the same way come here convincing knowing that god is going to touch you and while we are doing that um your prayer if you don't have your prayer request please write it quickly write it quickly and in case your faith you came here with a faith that is weak you did write some vital things you can add it quickly those online you can send you can send your prayer request very quickly. Now, we are going to do this very fast because our time is gone. Thank God Pastor Jakes is here. Are we together? Now, overflow. Listen, let's not be rowdy. 
Overflow one outside will walk to your projector stand. Overflow two, you also walk to your projector stand. Overflow three, walk to your projector stand. Those who are in here, you are trusting God to touch you, to touch your family members. You can make your way and come and stand orderly in front here now. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's do that very quickly. While we are doing that, please, if you have written your prayer request, I want you to wave it and ushers, you may find a way of splitting yourself very quickly. Let's, let's have ushers. If the ushers are not in our PR department, you can join them and then let's make it very fast. Make sure everyone's request um, is obtained, please. For those online, I want you to believe by faith. If you are still yet to write, just write it. Ushers, please. There are hands all around. Let's help out. Protocol can also help so that we'll make sure that everyone's request. If it's a text on your phone and you don't have the opportunity to write it down while I'm praying, you can just connect with it. It's not just a ritual. Believe in what we're doing. the name of Jesus we stand by this corporate grace and this corporate anointing Pastor Jax Ejimi there um, Pastor Alpha Benga overflow one Pastor Femi promise overflow two please quickly quickly let's go there and let's trust God to touch the people God has anointed this ministry and he has given us the grace to be the extension of the hand of Jesus over your life. And I want you to agree. I want you to believe. The worship team will lead us in a moment of praise and worship while we pray. And please listen. Except the people are prophesying to you or they are talking to you, just a touch. I want you to believe by faith. Are we together? You don't have to start giving them an explanation. This is why I'm here. Don't worry. Just connect by faith. If there is a word for you, the word will be given to you. Otherwise, just believe by faith. Father, we thank you. You call this place Koinonia and this meeting a miracle service. Lord, we pray for those online and those within. We decree and declare. Let there be a free flow of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Lord, let this touch not just be the touch of men. Let it be the touch of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let every one of these people come and testify here. In the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who, when you submit your prayer request, don't just be staring. This is not a cinema. You should be praying. Are we together? Because shortly after this, I will pray on this and I will speak over our lives. Prophecy is very powerful. So whilst you are standing there, whether you are, you know, up here or down, you should be prayerful, spiritualize your mentality. Now is not the time to laugh around and be talking carelessly. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be healed right now. Descending heaven touches earth. 
in this place in this place fire is burning incense is rising heaven touches earth in this place in this place
song will be that's what my song will be that's what my song will be hallelujah that's what my song will be that's what my song will be and that's what my song will be hallelujah hallelujah that's what my song that's what my song will be 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 hallelujah hallelujah that's what my song that's what my song will be that's what my that's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's all I have to say. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. what my song will be and that's what my song will be hallelujah that's what my song will be that's what my song will be that's what my song will be Kado Just pray in the spirit in one minute. Those following from any nation of the world, I'd like you to just pray. We're just going to pray and speak over this. Go ahead. Stretch your hands. We're praying on this request. Father, let your people return with testimonies. Hashala gata brada gata baraka to sada brada gadech in the cross asia sahasa baraka to shabrada gada balada ba rakata branda gada balada bush embratos kada brandi gadi balada bush Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let impossible situations be turned around by the Spirit of God. Lekato shata prateketo sapre degedeba. 
Rakata parata parato sa de prete kete baladaba. Arato se kele monta shindaba. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Lord, it is before you these prayers are laid out. Father, we give you praise. Thank you because whatsoever we ask in your name, that you will do. Thank you for prayers. Thank you for answers. Thank you for praises. Thank you for testimonies that abound. Father, we give you praise for there is nothing impossible with you. We give you glory because we know situations that have stood hitherto unbeatable. Lord, you will bend things tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will change things tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will bring breakthroughs by the power of your spirit. Amen. You bring healings. You bring deliverance. Amen. You will bring breakthrough, financial breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Amen. You bring changes, Lord, deaths, supernatural deaths will be canceled by the power of your spirit. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you for angels, the release of angels. Angels on assignment Amen. Angels bringing solutions and answers to prayers. Father, we give you praise because many will stand before you to give testimony and give glory to your name. For in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has been declared in the name of Jesus every request here. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, we turn it into testimonies. And let some of them begin to manifest from this night in the name of Jesus Christ let it be by the grace of God that by this time next month you will you will almost not have any requests to write in the name of Jesus Christ our time is gone but I want you to lift your hands I want to speak over your life now apostle why do we do this all the time because this is how you program the destinies of people these words you see they are not just languages it's not just the speaking you know i never cease to be amazed at how people's lives change overnight just because a word the bible says he sent a word to jacob not he spoke he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel hallelujah and he blessed them saying and he blessed them not thinking saying in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare that this month of September you are entering let it be called your season of strange results let it be called your season of strange results <laughs> anyone who has despised the grace of God upon your life in the name of Jesus may God use your life to prove a point I decree and declare over your spiritual life a new vista of insight and access into the mysteries of the spirit I release it upon you right now if you are a man of God here I pray may your ministry shift to a new dimension if you are a woman of God here I pray may your ministry enter a new dimension of power I declare that someone here may you encounter the power of God raw, the raw power of God the same way God comes to men may his power come to you may you know the mysteries of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life this is a family of great favor I declare if this grace is not yet speaking in your life I declare by the hand of God Almighty who brought that anointing upon my life and this house may favor practical favor begin to follow you from today in the name of Jesus Christ what you cannot do for yourself I ask my God to do it for you in this season 
if you are a man of God here I prophesy to you that the next time you stand upon this altar to dispense the word of God may you see a dimension of the spirit through your life and your ministry that will surprise you I know that there are many of us that are trusting God for all kinds of financial breakthrough I've taught you the principles of finances but there is a prophetic dimension of wealth are we together now and in the name of Jesus I declare the same grace that carried a raven and it brought bread to Elijah I decree and declare may that same grace carry your blessings and locate you with it in this season in the name of Jesus I pray for every family represented here in the name of Jesus and I say this from the depth of my heart enough is enough I prophesy it again enough is enough whatever represents setbacks in any family I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that an end comes to it this night every graduate here that is trusting God for a job you heard the testimony here in the name of Jesus Christ both where you applied and where you didn't apply may the angel of the Lord see to which that a miracle job locates you those who are in business here in the name of Jesus business is spiritual the grace that will cause your business to command strange results may that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ if there is anyone here in any kind of trouble that needs the hand of God that means if God does not step in for you you know you are in trouble I stand by the gift of prophecy and I decree and declare over your life come out of that trouble now whether it's a financial trouble whether it's whatever come out of it now in the name of Jesus Christ every attack on your destiny I decree and declare from tonight by the assignment of angels we ward off that attack in Jesus name whoever has been destined by God to help you rise and either because of witchcraft or insensitivity in the spirit he has not been able to locate you in the name of Jesus I declare I call them by the spirit and I command that they locate you believe in every prayer that we're praying we're entering the ember months and many people associate this month with all kinds of demonic activity minus you I say it again minus you everyone who is part of this prophetic family and connected to this family I declare the mystery of exemption over you in the name of Jesus Christ that when men say there is a casting down I welcome you into the greatest months that you have to face for this year I decree and I declare over your life we're rounding up there are some of you nothing ever works in your life it's not like you are lazy it just doesn't work except it fails you to the point that even when you see success you are afraid of it because you know it will not last I declare not only will you be successful I command your results to last I say it again by the Spirit I command your results to last I forbid you from this experience of up today and down tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ any door that was once open and is now closed I reopen it in Jesus name I hope you believe everything I'm saying 
please believe it with all your heart i pray for every student here i don't know what challenge you may be having or i don't know what you are trusting god for in the name of jesus i pray particularly for students that are supposed to have graduated and one thing or the other is keeping them i don't care what needs to be done let it be done to move you in the name of jesus christ i say it again let it be done to move you there are some of our young ones that just wrote post ume in the name of jesus there are some of you who the results you have seen now from that result you will not get anything serious i change that result now i change that result now i change that result now believe it you are too young to walk in unbelief i change that result now anyone assigned here program that you must die or that your loved ones as we enter this ember whether by accident as you are moving listen no but enter it i say it again if that vehicle is doomed for accident then i take you out of it but in the name of jesus if you enter it then it must not crash especially for you my dear brothers it takes a lot for a young man to be established and it's not a blessing if you are just going old and old and old and you have to beg for tea and bread every day in the name of jesus the grace that helps men that can take a man from nowhere and establish him because you have believed the lord i command your establishment now beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain